What's up students, it's your boy PGT. Welcome back to another class. Today's class I'll be covering different ways and options you can keep your grow space warm now that we are approaching the winter season. Most mushrooms can generally fruit between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but ideally the temperature you want to be at is around 70 to 75 degrees. This hits a good balance between allowing mycelium growth and keeping bacteria and contamination growth slowed down. To start things off, I'll go over some easy remedies you can do to keep your space warm. One of the easiest remedies you could do is to simply insulate your room. One of the best things i found is to use bubble wrap on the windows to help insulate them. But I just got a lot of bubble wrap around and they work really well for this task. I'm able to keep my room temperature from an average of 68 to an average of 70 just simply using bubble wrap for my windows. And also if you are at the home improvement store and you happen to see one of these little window kit things that they sell there, they're definitely a good pickup. They do a very good job at blocking out the drafts coming in through your window. They're a little bit more work to get installed, but they do a lot better than the bubble wrap here that I'm using. You can also pick up one of these door draft stoppers. If you're having issues with any cold wind kind of getting through the bottom of your doors, this will definitely help it. If you don't get one of these, you can simply just put a towel at the bottom of the door to help stop the draft coming in. Another solution you could do is just simply raise yourself off of the ground. Because heat rises in a room, the higher up your stuff sits, the warmer it is up there. Plus the dust is heavier than the air, so lifting stuff higher will also minimize the chance of contamination getting into your stuff. And the last tip I have for you is just get a thermostat or a hygrometer to put in your area. This little device here gives you your exact humidity and temperature in your room, so that way you don't have to play any guessing games of what temperatures you have. And that kind of covers up the easy remedies you could do. Now we'll go over some DIY stuff that you can build and get creative to kind of keep your area warm. One of the most popular things that people talk about in this hobby is building an incubator. The incubator will keep temperatures inside on the higher end closer to around 80 degrees and this helps to speed up colonization process for the mycelium. Ideally you don't want to be fruiting in the incubator, you generally just want to put agar dishes and grain spawn in there to get incubated. So for this incubator here I'm using a Bible Sun heating mat and what I'm doing here is I'm setting the temperature of the mat to around 85 to 90 degrees and what you want to do is keep this from making contact with your grains. So in order to do that I put in some shelves to elevate my grains and stuff off of the bottom so that we're not making direct contact with the heating mat. If you do make direct contact with the heating mat, the heating mat's going to dry out your grains and that's not good. So keep your stuff elevated, don't make direct contact with the heat. You just want ambient heat to kind of affect the incubator. I'm keeping my stuff on the shelf here. It's probably elevated about three to four inches up off the mat. I'll start putting my grains in and uh, from time to time I'll come back and I will check on the bottom of the grains using a temperature gun sensor and we want to make sure that the bottom of the grains or anything like that doesn't go above 85 degrees. Alright, so some tips here to kind of help you out on this system. Make sure that you are home and around if you're going to use this. Don't leave this unattended as it is a potential fire risk. And when you close things up, just leave the lid on loose. I like to flip the handles up on this. That way the lid doesn't fully close and this allows your grains to get the appropriate gas exchange needed to colonize. Another tip is to put your heating mat on a electric timer system. That way it can turn off every few hours or so to give the pad a break from just running 24-7. Generally this setup should be pretty safe so long as you're keeping the temperatures on the mat pretty mild. We're using the heating mat as pretty much intended and we're not going to make contact with it to make any hot spots. They mentioned this in a safety pamphlet but just make sure you read the safety instructions on your product so you understand what you're getting yourself into. Alright, the next type of incubator is called the tub-in-tub -tub incubator. And we're going to utilize two tubs here in order to make this work. The process is very simple. You get yourself one of the submersible aquarium heaters. You put it in the bottom tub. You add in some water in there. You put the top tub on top. And this will keep things in the incubator up to temperature. Now I'm using a 50 watt heater here with a temperature control knob onto it. I set the temperature on these things to around 84 degrees and I find that seems to keep the temperature inside the tub very optimal. 
Now two key points I really like about this system compared to the other one. Number one is I consider this to be safer. Water makes it hard for fire hazards to happen. Oh, and when you're setting this up, try and get rid of the little air bubble pockets from the beneath of the tub. You want all water to make contact with the tub, that way you get even heat distribution. If there's little air pockets in there, it's going to mess with the heat distribution. And number two, the water in a tub evaporating will help with the dry air in the colder months. It kind of acts like a pseudo humidifier for your room. So here's how the tub and tub incubator looks when it's all set up. I have a rack that's kind of elevating the jars off of the bottom. Same setup as the other Vival Sun heating mat one. And here I'll show you guys how I check the temperatures. You use a little heating gun here. And I just check the outside of the jars, and I check the bottom of the tub, and I make sure things stay suitable. The last topic I want to touch on is utilizing heaters in your space. I try and avoid using these and I just stick to cranking up my thermostat on my home's heating system to acquire the temperatures that I want. If, however, you're going to use them, an oil radiator is your best option. This provides steady heat without drying out the air so much when compared to like a traditional space heater. Some precautions I would take if I were to do this is to keep the heater at least three feet away from any flammable material. Ideally, you want the heater to be sitting on tile or concrete floor where it won't catch fire. And also only use this if you're in the room and make sure that the unit's in plain sight. As a special note, I want to touch on the topic of humidifiers. As we're in the colder months, heat will definitely dry things out and that's not ideal for mushrooms. I really recommend getting a humidifier system and trying to get your ambient humidity to be at least 50% or above. Having that ambient humidity helps you to maintain higher humidity inside of your environment where your tubs are enclosed at. So for temperatures, just know that 65 degrees Fahrenheit and above is fine. Things will still continue to grow at this temperature, although at a much slower rate than normal. You want higher temperatures in order to have mycelium colonize faster so that it can outcompete any other fungal competition in the grains. As always, safety is our number one priority, so please consider safety of your home first before incorporating any of my suggestions. Please use some common sense and don't sue me, bro.